Hello everyone. Uh, today we're going to take a look at a sample uh, research paper, a uh, sample research essay, and uh, I'll be focusing in this video on the formatting, not so much the content, but mostly the way this uh, essay is formatted in a document and how you could basically do the same. So uh, let's begin, guys. Um, first of all, as you can see in this sample paper, there is a title page. So a separate page devoted to uh, the title, basically, and uh, some of the information, such as your name and affiliation, etc. So in this case, we have um, the title. Um, notice that everything is in the font size 12 and the preferred choice for the APA, the font, is uh, Times New Roman. So Times New Roman 12. It's centered, so uh, it's not on the left or on the right. It is centered. It is not in boldface. It is not italicized and it's just written plain and simple somewhere towards the middle. Um, in the upper third of the page. So if this is the half uh, line, it's it's towards the um, uh, the upper half. And um, yeah, so one third from the top, maybe that would be ideal. So then you enter your name below, again, centered, the affiliation, which is the uh, college where you're studying. And uh, you can mention your instructor's uh, name here uh, below. All right, so that's that. Um, you also uh, need to add what's called a running head. Uh, how do we do that? Well, it's pretty simple. If you go to the top of the page and just double click, double click, uh, you will see uh, that you have um, uh, this field where you can enter the running head. And this is the format of the running head. So you have the word running head, uh, capital R, uh, the H is in lowercase. And then you have a what's called a, a colon and then what you have what's called the shortened version of your title so if the title is research driven critique al gore and global warming here you have a shorter version of it which is research driven critique notice that it's in all uppercase so all caps right okay and then once you're done typing this if you click on here like down at the bottom double click maybe you will see that the running head has been added and it and it repeats on every other page of your uh, paper so that's how you add a running head you also need to have your page numbers on the upper right hand side now how do we do that it's pretty simple you click on insert from the menu and then you uh you come down and you see here page numbers add page numbers and then it asks you where you want the page numbers to go. So I'm going to go with top of the page and you choose right, right? If I go with top of the page, maybe center, then um, it'll it'll appear somewhere here and I don't want that. So it's um, top of the page on the right. And then uh, you could choose whether the numbering starts from the first page or on the second page. In this case, we want the, the page numbers on every single page, including the title page. So I'm just going to click on uh, show number on first page, click OK, and then you see the page numbers appear on the top right for every single page of your um, uh, research paper. OK, so that's that's it for uh, the running head, the page number, the title page. OK, now we want to look at the body of the uh, paper itself or the essay itself. So um, first thing you got to learn is that um, the headings, the headers are uh, leveled. So it depends on how many levels of headers you have, but we're, we're mostly dealing with uh, level one headers and these need to be uh, centered. So not on the right, not on the left, centered, right? And they need to be in boldface. So like this, if it's in, in lowercase or if it's italicized, that's wrong. It needs to be uh, in boldface. Uh, we don't number them. Sometimes in articles, you're supposed to number the headings like 1.1, 1.2. In this case, there's no need for you to do so. Um, no need to add the word introduction. Just start by writing your title centered and in the middle. 
And then when you have another title, here's what you do. Problem one, fear appeal. Again, bold face and uh, situated in the middle. Problem two, same with problem two, problem three. We have all of that. And then we have the conclusion at the end. So conclusion. Uh, so basically you need one title, which is the title of your paper. And that, that marks the beginning of your introduction. You have uh, titles for each of the points. So if it's if you're discussing problems or strategies or whatever that may be, you have it um, in the center and it's in boldface, right? So you have the conclusion. And then notice that the references appear on a separate page altogether. And uh, the title for references is uh, not italicized and it's not in boldface. It's just in the center of a separate page. And if you want to do that, because sometimes, um, you know, you're adding the, separate, the references on the go and you have this problem that when you um, add something here, like if you go to another line and you start adding things, uh, this gets shifted down and it kind of messes everything. So what you could do to make this um, work is just bring your references to the, uh, to the end of your paper. And then what you do is you click on insert and page break. So what happens is this will begin on a separate page and no matter what you add, so if I keep adding lines and paragraphs, what happens is ideally, yeah, this won't shift down. You see, it still starts from the beginning of a, of a page. All right, okay, so um, use the page break function to uh, have your references appear at the beginning of a page, not shift it down towards the middle. All right, okay, so how about the formatting? Uh, of the font and the font size. Well, as you can see, everything that has been written here is in um, the font Times New Roman and size 12. And you need to double space. So sometimes you have this going on and it's really not that pretty. Um, and it's difficult to read and it's difficult to, uh, to annotate and comment on. It's a little cramped. So what you, what you should be doing is you should be double spacing. So you come here to where part says a line and paragraph spacing and click on two, voila, there. So now you have um, a double spaced passage that's easy to read and more pleasing uh, to the eye. Right, okay, so that's that. And uh, uh, what, what you could do is you could leave like an extra space between your paragraphs. So uh, it's double spaced in between the lines and then it's, uh, you know, there's an extra space in between the paragraphs, sort of like to show clearly where each paragraph begins and where uh, another paragraph ends. So that's all good. Um, so double space. Oh, also, um, the alignment is something else that you need to consider. So when you have uh, a paragraph like this, sometimes what people do is they justify like this. And it does look a little neat and tidy. So you have everything like all the margins are clearly aligned. But um, the APA uh, specifically recommends uh, only justifying uh, from the left hand side and not the right. So I'm going to go back and make this into the way it was before. So there you have it. Now let's take a look at the um, references at the end. So here's the references page. Like I said, the word references appears in the middle and on the top of the page, on a new page. Uh, everything should be uh, hanging, guys. So in, a, in another video, I explained how you could uh, uh, use the hanging structure for your paragraphs, but um, it's, it's pretty simple. What you got to do is you got to highlight it, uh, right click, click on paragraph, and then you got to choose hanging here, toggle this to 0.5 and uh, click on OK, right? So if your paragraph, I'm going to go through this one more time just to make sure that you know what you're doing. So um, if I take this out and I change this to none, 
you see my paragraph looks like this. And this is how what it looks like when you type it out normally. So when you're done typing it out, uh, right click, paragraph, hanging, one, two, three, four, five, so point five, okay, and there you go. So uh, beautiful hanging paragraph there. Uh, you gotta be very careful about um, how you use the uh, format and how you apply the format. Remember, it's always the last name, comma, initials, uh, and then comma in between the names, and then you have an ampersand, not an and. If you automatically generate your reference list, it's going to be a lot easier, and you're going to have uh, much less uh, headache trying to sort this out and to clean things up. Um, be careful. Sometimes you need to um, italicize, like in this case, we have a art, uh, journal article and the name of the journal needs to be italicized. One thing that, that students sometimes forget is that the um, volume number also needs to be italicized. So you might say, oh my God, this is just too much. This is, well, does it really matter? Well, um, it does matter to, uh, to the people who are reviewing it. And uh, even the nine here needs to be italicized, but not the uh, issue uh, number. So the volume number nine is italicized, but the three uh, isn't. And you gotta be very careful. Like there's a little mistake here. This is a comma, it should be a, uh, a period. And uh, yeah, everything else, don't forget to mention the website, uh, the links and everything. And um, yeah. That's, that's what it uh, eventually should uh, end up looking like. So this is a clean paper and the format is all good. And this is what I expect to see from you uh, in your research uh, paper. So uh, this is the end of this video. In another video, I will be talking about the content and how this student has, um, has uh, structured their uh, research paper and how they have uh, organized the information and the contents of the paper. Thank you guys for watching.